So we've talked about the great resignation or the big quit on this show before. The idea that people are leaving jobs in record numbers, whether they have a new job to jump to or not. So if you're in that boat and you're someone who's left a job, you're looking for a new one, what do you do now? Well, you can start by listening to our next guest. Jim Reed is joining us this morning. Good morning to you, Jim. Congrats on the book, by the way. Oh, thanks very much, Lindsay, and thanks for having me on, and happy International Women's Day to everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it is called Leading to Greatness. That is your book. You have, I know, hired a lot of people over the course of your career, and you're fond of something you call the personal hedgehog. Walk us through this model. What is that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, bo the, the book is really about leadership in life, and um, it's never too late to grow. It's the small changes that often have the biggest difference in our lives, and I lay out five principles in the book that the best performers understand and live every day. And one of these principles is about playing to your strengths and passion. And in the book, I call that the personal hedgehog. But it's really about uh, this three circles framework that you're showing up on the screen today. And it is one of the absolute best coaching tools that I've ever used. You can use it with your kids. You can use it with people that you work with. Uh, if you're coaching a team, whatever you choose to do. But, but really, it's about personal insight. And the fact that great careers kind of begin with clarity. So that's what it's all about. And the goal is to get to the intersection of the three circles and just be there. That's your sweet spot. That's your wheelhouse. And that's where you can be at your very best. So, Jim, when it comes to the job interview, okay, so you've got the interview um, and you're preparing for it. What would you say are some of the most common mistakes that you've seen people make in that space? Well, I think... I think the first, the first thing is that people just don't prepare adequately for the interview. I mean, you really have to do your research on the company, on the, on the manager that's interviewing you, on the job itself. So do your homework and, and kind of get ready uh, uh, for, 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 for a very, very successful interview. I think second is, is just not connecting your strengths and passion, which comes from the three circle framework, not connecting your strengths and passion to the job itself. You know, you really want to be able to demonstrate that your deep strengths and that your passion, what you love to do, is what's going to be needed and required in a job that you're applying for. So you have to make that connection. And finally, you have to, I always say to people, you have to earn the right to say no. Um, people start to negotiate in an interview too soon. Mm. And what you want to do is wait until you get the offer. It's not until you get the offer that you actually have leverage. Leverage. So there's no negotiation on compensation, on vacation, <laughs> on anything until they pick you and you're the one that they want to have join the team. So what you're saying is like when they say, do you have any more questions? You don't say, how much money can I make? Can I make this much? And how much vacation can I get? So save that conversation for a later date. S save that. You really have, I love the expression, you're in the right to say no. Like you really yeah. have to be selected. And then once you're selected, that's the time for you to put all those questions out there. Okay, so top tips for anyone heading into the interview? Well, I think you have to be clear and concise. So having really good insight about your deep strengths, that's where you're going to be the best at. That's where you can excel. I mean, everybody's born with a unique set of strengths, and the key is discovering them early in your career. A lot of people are winging it. So be clear, be concise, and be able to demonstrate that your strengths and your passion make you a great addition to the team. That's number one. The second one, you have to create a connection uh, with the manager that's interviewing you, or with the person that's interviewing you, it's a little bit like dating. <laughs> you know, you're not going to get a second date if you uh, if you don't have a really good experience on the first one. Mm -hmm. So engage the person that you're talking to, uh, make them feel a part of the conversation, make them want to have you back. And finally, I would say that this is one of the things that most people don't do: is if you want the job, if it plays to your strengths and passion, ask for the job. People, you'd be surprised. About ninety percent of people interview never say they want the job. So mm. if this is for you, if it's in your wheelhouse and you really want it, say you want it, say you, you want to join their team and mm. that nobody's going to work harder for you That's than great. yourself and you want to be there. Yeah, Jim, great tips. Thanks so much. The book is called Leading to Greatness. Jim Reed, a pleasure this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Now hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.